everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Kavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at House Mark 1, which is the new release by Audio Kit, and it's a beautiful sounding sampled vintage electric piano. I believe it was a Rhodes that was used. Uh, it sounds really great. I love it. Now, this was made by Henny the Business, so he is a YouTuber. He YouTubes on the iOS music apps. But also, more importantly, especially more importantly for his income, I would imagine, he's a famous music producer as well. So he's produced people like um, Jay-Z and uh, Kendrick Lamar would be my favorite on that list. Lil Wayne, uh, a bunch of different people, Black Eyed Peas. Um, then the other guy is Kennard Garrett. So he has produced people like Shaggy and Sting. In fact, he won a Grammy for uh, producing Sting last year, I believe. Um, so they've also got some uh, famous people in, famous producers and things in. For example, here there's a preset by a guy who was an engineer for Kylie Minogue and so on and so on. So um, it's been up with a bit of pedigree. But, um, you know, all that stuff's not really important if it doesn't sound good. The thing is, it does sound good. Uh, it sounds great, actually. I really, really like the sound of it. So, um, before I go further, there's a couple of things I want to mention. First thing, I've got three copies of this to give away to subscribers to the channel. If you're not a subscriber already, it doesn't matter, just subscribe now. All the details of how to win are in the comment pinned at the top of the YouTube comment section. So take a look there for details. And the winners will be announced two days from release of this video. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing, it's on an intro price right now. So it's $3.99 at the moment. And that price is going to go up, I forget when, but it's going to go up at some point to $12.99. Uh, that price is dollars. I guess it's probably the same in sterling. So uh, if you like it, get it now, probably. And the third thing is, it's actually for a good cause. Now you can watch a video on the Audio Kit's site where Henny talks about it. Um, but we can see here, uh, proceeds from this app benefit the music unit of the Creative and Performing Arts Division at Morehouse College in Atlanta. So, um, yeah, you know, spend your money, you'll get a nice electric piano, and it's for a good cause. Okay, so now I'm going to just go through, I'm going to go through some presets, and I'm going to um, explain the controls. So, yeah, by the time you've watched this video, you'll know how to use the app very, very clearly. Well, one thing I just want to mention first about the on-screen keyboard, make sure that, let me just change that, hang on. Um, at, when you open this up at certain sizes, you know, it might be like this, and you might think, oh, I don't really like this keyboard here, I can't play, you know, the bottom of the, the, the white notes, um, below the black notes, but it's just screen sizing, so be, be careful about that. Another thing just to mention about the keyboard is when we click this velocity button, here on the bottom part we have this on-screen keyboard velocity, and we can set it so that, um, let's here at the moment it's normal. Uh, this means when we hit a key, I'll show you with the mouse, when we hit a key near the bottom it's louder, and when we hit near the top it's quieter, and you can adjust those settings in there just something I want to mention. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm actually going to play this with Polyphase, which is a beautiful generative MIDI app. I'm not going to talk more about that. I'll just mention one disadvantage is it's inter-app audio, but it's really, really great sounding app. And it really suits the vibe, I think, for this kind of thing. So I'm just going to let it play and I'm going to um, talk you through things. So, we start here with the classic preset. So you can hear a little bit of key noise here. So that's really nice. Now we can put that up much higher if we want. So notice, by the way, that when we, you know, we use these switches to turn things on and off, 
You'll also notice that up here you'll always see the values of things, so that's really nice. For example, here when I change the speed, I'll see the speed in hertz or whatever. So here we got our phaser with a notch filter to help shape the sound. When you're in this view, you get information about the presets over here on the right. So here we've got a lot of panning. So if we go to the more screen, on this more screen we have auto pan, release, tuning, reverb and stereo. Let's have a little play with these. So the auto pan depth is up full. It's at a reasonably slow rate. That's what it would be like faster. Got a release button. We can adjust the tuning up or down one semitone. So you can use this to play along with instruments that are not in standard tuning or just to kind of get a bit freaky. It can sound really nice actually on these chords manipulating that. Double click to reset any knob to default. Let's listen to the reverb. So here we're getting a lot of key noise, and you can see the volume is full. This says vibrato, but actually, to be honest, it's wrongly named. It's tremolo, not vibrato. It's so good to know that even the pros get those two confused sometimes, right guys? Because <laughs> of course tremolo is changes in amplitude, vibrato is changes in pitch. There's no way of changing vibrato in this that I can see. Here we've got a nice big reverb, but with a fairly small mix amount. Now here, this name reminds me of an important point to point out. If we go into the velocity section in the top part, we can change the velocity curve for MIDI input. Soft, medium, or hard. This is really important setting. When it's on hard, you start to get this lovely kind of analog clipping, little distorted sound. So remember, Remember, we can also control that for the keys down here, okay? So of course, one of the points of having things like MIDI Learn is we can assign these knobs to our controllers or we could assign them to LFOs and different things like that. It'd be really nice to automate something like the tremolo rate with an app like MIDI LFOs. Now, people often ask about this thing, a lot of people don't understand how to do this. So let me just show you very quickly. 
go in here, MIDI LFOs. Okay, MIDI LFOs, the first LFO is sending out on channel 1, CC46. Now, let me go in here. We can't use MIDI Learn for this because it's not an actual real controller. So we'll do that, use the parameters. So I'll go here, tremolo rate, channel 1, 46. sources, MIDI LFOs. Okay, so you see now it's moving around. You can change the change the rate and things over here. You can change the minimum and maximum value here. This is a very useful little app. Art Kearns, great developer. Okay, so it's great that the parameters are exposed and we can do these kind of things and we can do our MIDI learn and so on. Let's continue. Massive reverb here. A few things down here I haven't talked about yet. So we can change the key color and the number of octaves and things like that. We have some different settings here we can adjust change the mod wheel destination, the pitch band, and so on and so on. Hold button, panic, etc. A lot of auto pan on this. Phaser 2, I believe. Yeah. Crazy, just bring the feedback down. Fair bit of auto panning here. Now, it doesn't have a delay, but of course you could use an external delay. For example, here we've got one of my favorites, Yukawa by Iceworks. Lovely sequenced delay with beautiful filter effects. And also by the same developer, which just came out yesterday. Koshiba, a fantastic sequenced gating effect. Put links to those above. You can check those videos out if you want. Another one of my recent favorite effects, which works well with this Velvet Machine by Yuri Turov. Of course, we can stick these together. Now, what else do I want to mention? before we finish up here. I just want to mention briefly, the only other electric piano I have reviewed so far on this channel is Apesoft's Electric Vintage, 
which is also a very, very nice um, Rhodes piano. So you can check out my video on that um, and compare them. They're very different. So I already have the Apesoft one, but I feel that I would have no problem getting this one on top of that because the sound is pretty different. I think this one is um, very sweet sounding. The Apesoft one is better if you want something um, with a bit more grit to it. And of course the Apesoft one also has a lot more effects baked in, chorus and uh, delay, uh, slicer, it's got a bunch of pretty cool stuff actually. So if you like electric pianos, I'd also encourage you to check that out. It's also a very good app. And as I say, uh, I don't think either of these really uh, necessarily replaces the other. There's plenty of room for both of them. One thing is this has key noise, whereas the Apesoft one doesn't from what I remember. So that is something that uh, adds a lot of character here. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, anything else I want to say? Mm, just, yeah, I think a really, really nice sounding app. Um, it's been very stable for me so far. I haven't had any crashes or anything. Um, haven't opened up multiple instances or anything, mind you. It's not heavy on DSP or anything like that. Uh, I mean, here, these apps are, some of those are quite heavy, like Velvet Machine is pretty heavy. Remember, we've got Apesoft opened up over there. Uh, Polyphase maybe is adding a fair bit here. Let's see. What happens when we get rid of that? Let me just um, quit polyphase. So we're down at uh, 56, 40. Yeah, it's still pretty high. Maybe I've got some apps running in the background because I don't think this should really be that high on DSP. So anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, remember it's for a good cause. So go in and help it out. Another thing I'd like to say is, I think, um, you know, it's good that uh, someone like Henny is promoting iOS music because iOS music is still very niche. Uh, I don't understand it. And I'm sure none of us really who love iOS music understand why it has not uh, become more popular. Still so many people are so desktop bound. And of course, that's not to say there are not a lot of advantages with desktop. There are, uh, at the moment, we've got a lack of, uh, you know, there's, uh, people feel very unsatisfied with different DAWs. They just feel none of them are really um, do everything that they should. Um, but there are a lot of advantages as well to iOS. I mean, uh, one good thing I think about iOS is, you know, you think, why are apps cheaper on iOS than on desktop? Well, you know, one major reason is because basically everybody who's, uh, using iOS is paying for their software, you know. On desktop, one of the reasons apps are expensive is because a lot of people are not paying for them. They're just, you know, um, downloading cracks and whatever. So obviously that is going to drive the prices up. So I think that's one good thing about iOS. I mean, there's a lot of things you can criticize about Apple and its sandboxing and so on. And definitely there are frustrations, as I say, with iOS. Sometimes there are stability issues. Um, but it is uh, very good that people are being paid for their work. You know, this is something that we, we really, um, you know, need to take more seriously, I think, now in our society. There's so much temptation. Nobody wants to pay for anything. Well, you know, especially in a time like COVID, um, you know, I really notice at the moment uh, so many artists and musicians and things are struggling, you know, so people need to get out there and support artists and stuff. So yeah, it's great that um, Henny's doing some work in, uh, you know, promoting these things. Obviously, if if iOS tools can take off more among these top producers and stuff, they're far more likely to get taken seriously by the general public. So it's brilliant. So it's good work here. Um, that said, everybody, if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, etc. There's a lot of time and work goes into making these videos, and I've got a bunch of Oh, other videos on tons of different iOS apps since uh, samplers like um, EG seg or like segments and stuff uh, is in there that a lot of people who are watching this might be interested in. Um, go and check out my, my older videos, you know, and subscribe to the channel. I usually have free copies of apps to give away when I make a video. 
So um, yeah, all right. Um, take it easy, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, take care.